Wang Chu wrestling is nothing new to Maoshan and Huairo district near Beijing. Records show that it was practiced here back in the 19th century, but the tradition may go back even further than that. Back then, it was the exclusive preserve of men. These days, however, women are free to take part in this age-old tradition and are proud to do so. It's the crack of dawn, but the Peng household is already a hive of activity. In a few days, Wang, Li Yuan and the other women of the village are going to teach kids in the local primary school the art of wrestling. She needs to practice and get a few words of advice from her father-in-law. <laughs> Mao Shan village is in Huairo, a suburb of Beijing municipality. You could call it Peng village, as 70% of the villagers here have this surname. Although most men in the village do wrestling, it's rare to find a household like this one. Four generations of wrestlers under one roof. This old folk song takes Grandpa Peng back. Mao Shan, a Manchu settlement established in 1845, is named after the mountain that overshadows the village, Mount Mao, which means Cat Mountain. There's a curious local legend that tells how the mountain got its name. Apparently, back in the days of Emperor Kangxi, two brothers, Yu Liu and Yu Qing, resorted to banditry and proclaimed themselves kings of the mountain. For the villagers down below, it was the beginning of a reign of terror that only ended when the imperial authorities sent troops to bring the brothers Yu to heel. The overjoyed villagers suddenly noticed that a rocky outcrop outside the village faintly resembled a cat. To them, the symbolism was obvious. The Chinese word for fish is pronounced yu. The brothers who had preyed on them were called yu, and cats prey on fish. What else could have rid them of such ferocious fish but an equally ferocious cat, symbolized by the rock? The village thrived under the cat's watchful eye, and in time, people began to associate this cat with an even bigger rock, the mountain itself. The Manchu folk games is a tradition that's almost but not quite as old as the great cat that protects the village. It's an annual event held in the first month of the lunar year. As its name suggests, it's a celebration of traditional folk sports and games. Therefore, Grandpa Pang, now well into his 80s, never thought he'd ever be called upon to train the women in his family to wrestle. In fact, it's through the games that Grandpa Pang met his wife. It wasn't because of the wrestling, though. Although the sport was a great way for a man to show off his strength and prowess, it was hard for even the best and most handsome wrestlers to attract the amorous attentions of girls when they were wrestling. <laughs> Uh, 
เป็นไม่เป็นต้องตีเองอ่ะ The involvement of the women of Mao Shan and wrestling is down to one determined woman, Wang Shufang. She originally came from Fangning County in Hebei Province, more than 30 kilometers away. This person told me, you are from the Chinese people. That was in the 80s. We were more poor. Wang Jiawu and Ma Sheng Wang had nine children. 一冬天穿的，夏天掏出棉服穿，夏天的就这么来回折腾。当时那会儿哪有电灯？那黑不隆咚点煤油灯。说是那会儿就说，哎，科家北京市怀柔县去吧。说有电灯，说还有电视看，还有白面吃。说那那会儿争着抢，就往这么嫁呗。那有人当媒人，那就来了。那这是先结婚后恋爱。说一实在，我就是最没干够的事，就是没上没念够书。我那时候想渴望着说上个大学，我上哪儿上也大学。Not long after she got married, Wang Shufang took to the amateur stage. She put together an amateur theatrical group composed of local housewives, and they wrote, directed, and acted their shows all by themselves. They mostly performed in the village, but they also did shows in the township and up and down the district. Her marriage to a local man might have been a lucky break, but now she was really taking control of her life. 我的第一次转折，我很清楚。说一实在的，你看我们九六年就开始啊，我们姐几个就坐在炕头上就写这个小品呐、啊，表演唱。他第一个编的就是《劝丈夫》，因为我是咋着，我不怕，我啥不怕，不怕寒碜，不是？你让别人让冲男的去演，你肯定怕寒碜呀。完又组织三八妇女节演出，又春节还搞春节联欢晚会，就瞎玩玩，这特热闹。那时候觉得特好，都。Wang Shufang enjoyed herself, and the villagers liked her easygoing nature and admired her determination. In 2004, she became head of the Village Women's Federation. Wang Shufang was at last in charge of her own life. Moreover, her grassroots theatricals group reminded people that they had the power to do things for themselves. They determined to restart the old folk games that hadn't been held since the Cultural Revolution. With that, Manchu wrestling started again. At first it was men only, just as it always had been. But 2006 saw the village wrestling team perform at a Beijing Temple Fair. When they were a man down, Wang Shufang grabbed the opportunity and stepped into the ring. <laughs> 我还记得当时特特搞笑，穿个裙子啊，大伙都说说那你穿裙子能上去摔跤吗？裙子这都露着脖子盖子呢，说是那后来我说不行，把别人的裤子给我一条，我就穿了，摔就一个人在那儿
你说这一个女的背俩人的那种摔，好像让人说好像也不好意思似的弄的。现在现在就没人这么说了。So the first women's wrestling team in history was formed in Maoshan Huairou District. Although it had looked like good fun when they saw the men do it, Few of the women realized just how much skill and strength was involved. Also, 你在里边视线也不好，然后那个空气也不好，摔完一下来头晕。夏天的时候满身是汗，你一辈子都不容摔，就是汗滋滋的，口也渴，累得喘不上气儿。然后就这嗓子都疼，嗯，胸胸口都跟着疼摔。这次上昌平，根本就没有地毯，就是一个大铁板底儿，还都有栏，就在那上摔，哇，都带衣服，我来看全是轻的。那那那可是真是不是说是，呃，你随便玩玩不着地儿那不行，你真得实摔。But for all that, the women enjoyed their first bouts of wrestling. For them, the prop was a big toy. When the bell rang, they threw themselves into the fray. But the moments they enjoyed the most came after the show. The crowd cheering them to the rafters. Hey! The crowd <laughs> 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 气儿都上上来了，你在下着广场那么多人，你哇一拍，那上千人呐，多呀，在底下瞅，一亮相，人一瞅全是女的，把我们几个觉着特别自豪，心情就不一样嘛。那等他们一吃惊，完了觉着更好像摔着更有劲儿了似的，这样一瞅，觉着好像你们男的男人能摔，完女人也能。The props for wrestling are easily damaged. Getting together to fix them has become a cozy village ritual. In 2005, Mao Shan wrestling was officially recognized as national intangible cultural heritage. Nowadays, even at times when most young people are working away from home, wrestling thrives in the village. And it's all down to the women's wrestling team. <laughs> The oldest team member is already 59 years old. The youngest is 19. But for the tradition to stay alive, it's vital to interest youngsters in the sport. The township's Manchu Middle School has incorporated traditional sports such as wrestling and whip dance into the PE curriculum. And teaching middle school students wrestling skills is now part of the job for the women's wrestling team. The wrestlers demonstrate the moves without their costumes on. Later on, they give a demonstration of the art of wrestling wearing their costumes. The team members are all mums, and some of their own kids attended the school. They hope that the kids can see the fun in wrestling. The basic moves involved in wrestling haven't changed for hundreds of years. The biggest change has been its evolution from a two-person wrestling match to a one-person show that imitates two men wrestling. As to the origin of this kind of wrestling, many theories have been put forward. One 
is that in order to kill the conceited official Ao Bai, the Qing Emperor Kangxi asked an official surnamed Peng, who was in charge of the Eight Banners, and his twin brother to take advantage of the wrestling match to take down Ao Bai. Whatever the truth of the matter, wrestling has established itself as a popular pastime for the people across the country and from various backgrounds. <笑>你要是这么拄着 再就这样吧，赶紧好好弄弄，这么这么的事。草鱼说：“都都把你压倒了，这么的吧？你这都蹬着蹬着起不来吧？”“是，你一劲儿就起来了，这样哈。”“你一边摔着一边脑脑袋
a family restaurant inn. The inn is their own house and they cook their own homegrown organic vegetables. But whenever there's a wrestling event, they close up and go. For the Pung family, where wrestling has been passed down four generations, the game has changed their personalities and family relationships. Wrestling has brought out the potential in these women. It's fun and it gives them a sense of accomplishment. It's taught them that there's more to life than farming and raising children. Two weeks on, the wrestling mums come back to the Manchu Middle School to see how the kids are progressing. First, the students show them what they've learned. Surprisingly, they put something new into the performance. Maybe it's the subtle influence of the environment they grew up in. Traditional or not, you could argue that moves like these bring Manchu wrestling back to its roots, its simple joys and pleasures. Of course, some of the kids have learnt the traditional moves well. Kou Li Ming is about to marry his fiancée, Gao Ming. He and his parents are discussing arrangements for the wedding reception. His parents think he should provide most of the input. It is, after all, his big day. Back home, Kou Li Ming and Gao Ming draw up a list of people to be invited to the wedding and start sending out invitations. In rural China, it's common for people to hold wedding banquets and wakes at home. Unlike city dwellers, who prefer to hire out hotels and restaurants. Usually, people set up a makeshift kitchen outside the family home and arrange for a couple of chefs to come and do the cooking. The guests are all friends and relatives of the bride and groom. It's first come, first served. Guests who arrive early eat first. The guests keep coming and a constant stream of dishes flows from the kitchen. That's one reason 
why these events are called running water banquets. But what about the three eights banquet mentioned by Cole? <laughs> The man giving the orders is Li Jiping. Round here, people like him are called Daliao. Daliao used to refer to monks charged with running a temple kitchen. Nowadays, however, it refers to lay people who organize banquets for weddings and funerals. Li Chiping is not only the organizer of the ceremony, but also a three-eighths banquet specialist. This morning, Lee is up at the crack of dawn getting everything ready. The three-eighths banquet requires a lot of organizing. It can involve catering for as many as 400 tables. But this is nothing new for him. Every day, he's organizing the kitchenware, ingredients and staff needed for a good three-eighths banquet. With generations of experience at his fingertips, it's little wonder that he's the man villagers turn to in these parts when they want to mark a wedding or funeral in style. Xiao Yiying is one of Sanjian Fang's neighboring villages. The Double Ninth Festival is approaching, and a steamed bun cooking competition is going to be held here. The competitors are all village children. It's all to do with an old Xiao Yiying custom. Every Double Ninth Festival, the children have to make a special type of steamed bun for their parents and elders. It represents filial piety. Steamed buns are very common, but many young people are at a loss to tell you how they're made. Handmade steamed buns are now a luxury. Yuan Jifang is a steamed buns maker. Several years ago, when the steamed bun shop started up, Yuan and two other women from this village got the chance to work as craft steamed buns makers. Steamed buns these days are generally machine made. Although steamed bun technology has advanced over the years and a greater variety of fillings are available, there's nothing quite like the taste of old-fashioned hand-rolled buns. These handcrafted buns were an instant hit with the villagers here. Indeed, word of the handmade buns quickly spread far and wide. People from nearby villages often turn to them when they want steamed buns for a banquet or other special occasion. Business is booming. Neil Dong is an experienced three eighths banquet specialist. He's very familiar with the tradition. 三八席是三八二十四道菜a number of dishes are at the core of the traditional three-eighths banquet, and the order in which they're served is also important. For example, a dish made of a slice of pork leg begins the series of hot dishes, symbolizing good fortune and happiness. Cauliflower, representing felicity, rounds off the series of hot dishes. The eight bowls start off with four joy meatballs, a deep, auspiciously red-colored dish. Meanwhile, candied apples, symbolizing peace and tranquility, conclude the series of eight bowls. It's unusual for a banquet to be as formal as this. 
How did the banquet come into being? Certain tastes and flavors trigger off childhood memories. Of course, this memory is highly selective. People remember the good times. The bad times, on the other hand, tend to be laughed off or romanticized. Though tables these days groan under the weight of meat and fish, there was a time when these items were unimaginable luxuries. So much so, people would make a carving of a fish, pour sauce on it, and gaze at it, hoping and praying for better fortune in the year to come. Nowadays, steamed buns are an everyday staple food. So, shouldn't something a bit more special be offered to parents and elders as a symbol of piety and devotion? Strange though it may be for modern people to understand, over a hundred years ago, even steamed buns were a luxury. So, Although the steamed buns of Xiaoyi Ying were given their name by an emperor's son long ago, the values these buns represent, loyalty, filial piety and righteousness, stood the test of time in this village. In the old days, making steamed buns for your parents meant that you were saving the best ingredients for them. Things are different now, of course, but in an important sense, the fact is that these buns reveal how enduring filial piety is in this village. Flour, yeast and water are the basic ingredients. Add some warm water, mix, then knead into a dough. Cover it with damp cheesecloth and leave the buns to rise in a warm place. When the dough has risen, add a little baking soda and knead again. Divide it into small pieces of dough and roll them into little buns. When that's done, it's time to steam them. 20 minutes should be enough. It looks straightforward enough, but each step needs to be done correctly. If the dough doesn't rise properly, the steamed buns will have the wrong texture and consistency. Care also needs to be taken with the baking soda, too much or too little, and you'll end up with sallow, sour-tasting buns. It's a craft that takes a lifetime to master, and to get it right, a bun maker has to put heart and soul into it. But the results are worth the effort. There's nothing like the sweet taste of a good hand-rolled steamed bun. Not the taste of sugar, but pure wheat and goodness. The three-eighths banquet is an old tradition in Qing Yundian. Whether it's a wedding or a funeral, villagers all like to treat friends and relatives to the three-eighths banquet. Nobody knows exactly when it originated, though there is some speculation that it dates back to the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644. It's said that in the early days of the Ming Dynasty, many landless families from Shanxi were granted land in what is now Beijing Municipality. If so, the likelihood is that the origins of the Three Eights Banquet lie in Shanxi. It's said that in Shanxi there was once a very wealthy family and they had but one daughter. When she grew up, she got married. Three days after the wedding, she returned to her parents. They were so pleased to see her again that they ordered a grand banquet to be thrown in her and her husband's honor. So particular were they about this feast that they laid down exact specifications for each dish as well as how and when it was to be served. In time, word of this elaborate banquet spread not to be outdone, 
other families in Pingding began to welcome their daughters and sons-in-law home in like grand style. Zhang Hongyu is a cook who works for Li Jiping. He's an old acquaintance of Chef Leo. In order to get to know the rules of the Pingding Three Eights Banquet, he went to Pingding to sample the Three Eights Banquet. So it's said that the Shanxi people who upped sticks and moved to what is now Qingyuan naturally brought the Three Eights Banquet tradition with them. Of course, it has evolved. It's become a banquet that accompanies all manner of festive occasions. Yuan Ji Fang has been making steamed buns for years. Her way of passing on this ancestral wisdom is to teach her children to make steamed buns. Fanny Go 10-year-old Yang Meng Lu is Yuan's daughter. She copies each stage faithfully. Lately, all she's been able to think about is the Double Night Festival Steamed Bun competition. On the morning of the Double Night Festival, the parents of Xiaoyi Ying Village bring their children to the village steamed bun shop. The children range in age from 7 to 14 years old. Everyone, it seems, is eager to have a go. First, two grown-ups, both experienced bun makers, give a demonstration. The children are clearly delighted by the performance given by the two professionals. It looks so easy in their skillful hands. Some of the children even start doing the moves while watching. Young Meng Lu's face is fixed with a calm, concentrated expression. She's very confident. It seems that the coaching she got from her mother yesterday has steadied her nerves. Children have the amazing capacity to turn the most mundane things into something interesting, something fun. They do more than make plain buns. As their imaginations run wild, they produce the most amazing dough sculptures. Today, Lee comes to Cole's family to discuss the menu of the Three Eights Banquet with the groom's parents. Hey, Sai 
行，咱那算算大戏多少多的？五十多是吧？哇，咱们先七十多，七十多，反正你们村五十多多，我来弄个六十多。啊，行，咱先，咱先按那个按五十多准备。Strictly speaking, the banquet that Lee and Co have arranged doesn't qualify as a traditional three-eighths banquet, but it's close enough as far as they're concerned. Since many of the guests at the wedding banquet will be friends of the couple, there will be many young people, so they want to add some new style dishes to the menu. For this reason, Lee puts Chef Zhang in charge. Zhang was born and raised in Qingyuntian and has been a cook for over 20 years. He's an innovative and creative cook who loves experimenting and creating new dishes. He's in the kitchen early this morning working on his latest creation, seven flavor sesame fish gaojongs. Tian You could say that Zhang has put his heart and soul into the three eights banquet. He got to the kitchen at four in the morning, a time when most of his colleagues are fast asleep. The kitchen is deserted, so Zhang makes a start on his own. In order to make sure that nothing goes wrong with this dish, Zhang invites Mr. Leo over. He's also a three-eighths banquet chef. Nian 一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一勺一
and will continue to be passed on. The Double Ninth Festival Banquet has started. The children present their filial piety steamed buns to their grandparents. The senior citizens are overjoyed. They love the filial piety. They never imagined, however, that it came in so many fascinating shapes and sizes. Cole Leeming's wedding banquet has begun. On this special day, there are only two feelings we can read on the faces of the newlyweds and guests. Happiness and hope. <laughs>